quick revision video on the equilibrium constant Kc. So the first thing we'll look at is how do you write expressions for homogeneous equilibria. So there's a, an equilibria where everything's aqueous, so homogeneous, everything's in the same physical state. So Kc would be the equilibrium concentrations of the products and you raise them to the power that's balancing the equation divided by the equilibrium concentrations of the reactants. So the little c in the case c represents the equilibrium concentrations and obviously these square brackets are used for that. Beware heterogeneous equilibria. So if you've got an equilibrium where you've got liquids in there as well or solids in there, their concentrations would be constant and so you leave them out of the expression. So we'll move on to units of Kc. Now these can vary and it all depends on the powers in the expression. So we'll look at a couple of examples. Here's the first one. So the Kc expression would look like that. So the units would effectively be moles per decimeter cubed squared on the top divided by moles per decimeter cubed cubed on the bottom. That would cancel to 1 over moles per decimeter cubed and then we bring everything to the top and it becomes decimeters cubed per mole. Another one, so there's the equilibrium for the Haber process. So there's the KC expression. So the units would effectively be moles per decimeter cubed squared on the top to the power 4 on the bottom. So that cancels down to 1 over moles per decimeter cubed squared and bringing everything to the top decimeters to the power 6 moles to the minus 2. And just before I move off this slide, I haven't got this one, but just to talk through, if you've got the same powers top and bottom, then Kc would actually have no units. We'll look at some Kc calculations now, so we'll just talk through the different types and then I'll go through in detail the, the most difficult one. So if you're given the equilibrium concentrations, this is the easiest type, you just substitute the values straight into the Kc expression. You might be given the equilibrium moles and the volume of the reaction vessel, so you need to convert the moles to concentrations using the concentration equals moles over volume equation and then substitute into the Kc expression. So both of those are relatively straightforward. If you're given the initial moles and the moles of either a reactant or product at equilibrium, then you need to use what I call the ICE method. I'm going to go through that in a second. So we use this method to calculate the equilibrium moles and then if we're given the volume of the vessel we'll need to turn those into concentrations. So we'll look at one of those now. So we're told the initial moles of nitrogen and hydrogen, we're told the reaction vessel volume is 2 decimeters cubed and at equilibrium we've got 1.76 moles of ammonia being formed calculate Kc. So we use the ICE method and the I stands for initial moles. So the initial moles of nitrogen are 3.28, hydrogen 6.64 and we wouldn't have any ammonia initially. We then skip to the equilibrium moles because we're told that at equilibrium we've got 1.76 moles of ammonia. So there's been a change in moles of plus 1.76 or an increase of 1.76 for the ammonia. So now we need to bring in the mole ratios. So if we look at the nitrogen, so for nitrogen to produce 1.76 moles of ammonia, half as much needs to react. And so it's going to drop by 0.88. And moving on to the hydrogen, you can see a 3 to 2 ratio there. So to produce 1.76 moles of ammonia, we need 1.5 or 3 over 2 times that of hydrogen, and that comes out at 2.64. So hydrogen's moles will drop by 2.64. So now we know the change, we can work out the differences, and that's going to give us the equilibrium moles. So it's 2.40 for nitrogen and 4 for hydrogen. Equilibrium concentrations now, so we just divide those moles by the volume of 2 decimeters cubed and we get those numbers there. So then we'd put them into the Kc expression and we get a value of 
0 0.0807 decimeters to the 6 mol to the minus 2. So for the next part of the video, I'm going to look at how you explain an equilibrium shift in terms of the equilibrium constant. So we're not using Le Chatelier's principle now. We're using the equilibrium constant to explain why an equilibrium moves in a particular direction. So at the very heart of this is this statement here. Equilibrium constants, this video is about Kc, but it applies to Kp as well. These are only changed by temperature changes. So the first one we'll look at is changing the temperature on an exothermic forward reaction. So I'm just keeping it very generic here. So we've got reactants in equilibrium with products. It's got a negative delta H, so it's an exothermic reaction. The KC expression is going to look like that. So the rule for exothermic reactions is if you increase the temperature, you decrease the value of the equilibrium constant. So basically, if the temperature is increased, the equilibrium concentrations need to change to get to this new lower equilibrium constant for the reaction. So if you think about how do these change to make the Kc value lower, well, the product's concentration needs to drop, the reactant's concentration needs to increase. How does the equilibrium do that? It shifts to the left. So moving on to endothermic reactions now. So we've got the same slide effectively. The only change is this positive delta H now. So if you increase the temperature for an endothermic reaction, the Kc value, the equilibrium constant value, will actually increase. So the equilibrium needs to shift to increase the Kc value. So how is it going to do that? Well, it needs to make the product's concentration higher, the reactant's concentration lower, and so therefore it's going to move to the right. So if we move on to the effect of concentration now, so I'll deal with changing the concentration of a reactant. We've got the same generic equilibrium, reactants in equilibrium with products. Obviously got the same generic Kc expression. So at the very heart of this is that golden rule that the temperature is the only thing that changes the value of an equilibrium constant. So if we're changing the concentration, the Kc value has to remain the same. So let's suppose the concentration of a reactant was increased. So it's the denominator term in the Kc expression. If the equilibrium didn't shift, then obviously this has got bigger. So the Kc value is going to decrease. Well, it's not allowed to decrease. It's got to stay the same. So the equilibrium is going to need to shift to keep Kc at its value for that temperature. So how is it going to do that? Well, it needs to lower the reactant's concentration and it needs to increase the product's concentration. How does the equilibrium do that? It shifts over to the right. So we'll look at changing the concentration of a product now. So nothing's changed here. I've still got my generic equilibrium and Kc expression. Reminder of that golden rule, changing the concentration of a reactant or a product won't change the equilibrium constant value so long as we don't change the temperature. So now let's suppose we increase the concentration of a product. So the ter this term here, this numerator term in the equilibrium constant expression is going to increase. So if the equilibrium doesn't shift, Kc is going to increase. But it's not allowed to. It needs to stay the same because the temperature is staying the same. So the equilibrium needs to shift to maintain Kc. So what's going to happen? Well, the product's concentration needs to drop, the reactant's concentration needs to increase. How's it going to do that? It's going to move to the left. 